Let's get started on your notes over factoring out a GCF, or greatest common factor. The first thing we're going to do is go over the distributive property. So when do I use the distributive property? Well, when I have a term that's right in front of the parentheses, okay, I have this term right here that's butted up next to the parentheses. When I want to simplify this expression, I'm going to distribute that term into every term on the inside of the parentheses. So let's multiply. So 2x times 3x, numbers, then variables. So 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. Next term, 2x times 2 is positive 4x. Let's go on to our next one. So in this case, I've got 3x squared y as the term that's right outside the parentheses. So when I distribute this into each term on the inside of my parentheses, I want you to recall the product rule that says when I am multiplying variables with exponents, I can add the exponents. So 3x squared y times 4xy, numbers, then variables. First, 3 times 4 is 12. Then I'm going to look at my variables one variable at a time. So I've got x squared times x, that's x cubed, then y times y, which is y squared. Now my next term, 3x squared y times negative 1, negative 3x squared y. And the next one, I've got this 5a out in the front. I'm going to distribute it into every term on the inside of these parentheses. Nobody's left out. Everything gets multiplied by 5a, and that's how we get rid of those parentheses. So 5a times 2a squared is what? 10a cubed. 5a times negative 4a is negative 20a squared. 5a times 10 is positive 50a or plus 50a. So let's move on. What are factors? Numbers or parts, polynomials in this case, that when multiplied together, form a product. So for example, if I have 3 times 8, that equals 24. 3 and 8 are both factors of 24. When I multiply them together, I get a product. So prime factors are polynomials that cannot be factored further. So you might recall prime numbers. For example, 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number. What makes these prime numbers? The only factors they have are 1 in itself. So the factors of 2 are 1 and 2. The factors of 3 are 1 and 3. The factors of 5 are 1 and 5. So they're prime. We can't factor them any more than that, okay? So what we're going to do when factoring out a GCF today, and I'm going to give you some notes and we're going to refer to these as we go through these examples. When factoring out a GCF, coefficients then variables. You probably heard me say numbers then variables earlier. Coefficients then variables. So the first thing we're going to do is determine a GCF for your coefficients, a greatest common factor for your coefficients. What's a coefficient? These are just the numbers in front of the variables. So let's write that down. Numbers first. Then focus on your variables one at a time. One at a time. So numbers, then variables. We're going to take a variable out only if it is common between all terms and take the smallest exponent. Some things I want you to remember today, distribute means in this case, distribute like what we did earlier when we distributed those terms into the parentheses, we multiplied. So when we distribute, we multiplied. What we're going to be doing today is if you get something 
for example, like this, we're going to do the reverse of distributing at 5 a.m. We're going to go from this to that, from this to that, from this to that. How do we do this? We factor out a GCF. So you can refer to these notes right here. GCF, greatest common factor, means we're going to divide. We're not multiplying. When we distribute, we're going to be dividing something out, the same thing out of every term when we factor out a GCF. A lot of students really struggle with this concept, so if you struggle today, just know that that's totally normal and you're just like a lot of students. So your examples might look slightly different, um, or the notes that I'm about to give you might look slightly different than what you see, but the examples are the same, the content is the same, so just follow along. So when I look at number one, I've got 2x plus 8, and I'm going to look at my numbers first, or my coefficients first. What is the greatest common factor between 2 and 8? The biggest number that goes into both numbers, it's 2. And in this case, I don't have any common variables, so I'm not looking at that right now. When I factor out a 2, what am I left with? 2x divided by 2 is just x, and then I look at my next term. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So one of the things I like to point out is if I start with two terms, that 2x is a term, 8 is a term, when I start with two terms and I factor out a GCF, I am still going to have two terms on the inside of my parentheses. Okay, so let's look at number 2. It's a lot like number 1. Let's look at the GCF between 5 and 5, or 5 and negative 5, and it's 5. So that's what I'm going to divide out of each term. They have no common variables, so I'm not looking at that. I'm going to divide out of 5. 5x divided by 5 is 1x, so I'm just going to write out an x. Negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1, so I'm going to write x minus 1. Let's go on to number 3. Number 3 is our first example where I have some variables in both terms, and we'll look at that in just a second. Let's just focus on the coefficients first, the GCF of 4 and 10. And I first look at this, the smaller number, 4, and I know 4 won't go into 10, so let's go to the next factor, the next largest factor of 4, which is 2. And does 2 go into 10? It does. So I know I can factor out a 2. Now let's look at our common variables. They both have x's. But this one has two x's, and this one has, or x times x, and this one has just one. So the greatest amount that they have in common is actually the one with the smallest exponent. That's the greatest amount that I can factor out, the greatest amount they have in common. So I'm going to divide out, or factor out a, GC, uh, a 2x. 4x squared divided by 2x is 2x. Negative 10x divided by 2x is negative 5. Let's go on to number 4. I'm looking at negative 12x minus 8x squared. The greatest common factor between 12 and 8 is 4. And since I have a negative out in front right there, I'm going to actually factor out a negative. When I factor out a negative 4, and they, I'm looking at the variables now, um, this one has x, this one has x squared, and I'm going to go with the one with the smallest exponent, and that's x, right? Because if there's no exponent there, it basically means there's a 1, and you can write a 1 there if, you, if you'd like. So when I divide out negative 4x, I get 3. Negative 8x squared divided by negative 4x is positive 2x. Okay, let's go on to number five. Number five, when I look at my coefficients, I don't have any numbers in common, any factors in common between five and nine. So I don't have a numerical GCF, but I do see that they both, they both have the same variables. And the greatest amount that I can pull out is just an X. And I'll be left with five plus nine X when I divide that out of each term. Number six, when I look at 8x and 7y, there are absolutely no factors in common 
between these two. There's no numbers in common between 7 and 8, no factors, and there are no common variables, so we call this prime. This expression cannot be factored any more than it already is. So let's go on to number 7. Now I've got three terms here, so I'm going to be looking at the 8, the 4, and the 2. The GCF between those three numbers I know cannot be bigger than 2 because there's no number that's bigger than 2 that goes into 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2. And now let's look at the variables. Numbers, then variables. That's what I like to say. Coefficients first, then we'll look at the variables. They, have, they all have x's in common. This is the one with the smallest exponent, which means that's the greatest amount that I can factor out. So my GCF is 2x squared. So unlike the distributive property where we multiply it in, we're going to factor out a GCF and divide this out of every single term. So when I divide it out of each term, I'm going to be left with 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now let's go on to number 8. I'm looking at 6x squared and 3xy. So the GCF between 6 and 3, well, when I look at that smallest number and it goes into 6, I know that's my GCF. They both have some x's in common, but the greatest amount I can pull out is just an x. And now I know this one has a y, but the other one, the other term does not. So I can't factor out a y because they do not have that variable in common. When I factor out a 3x, I'm left with 2x plus 1y, or I could just write y. And if you write a 1 in front of that y, it's completely fine. Let's go on to number 19. I have two terms here. I'm looking at my coefficients first, and I notice that my smaller number actually goes into the bigger number. So I know that that is the greatest common factor between those two numbers. And now let's look at the variables. They both have some a's and b's. This one, has only, this one has two a's, the first one, the second term has one, so I can only factor out one. Again, I'm going with the smallest exponent. They both have b's, so I can factor out a b. So 15ab, that's my GCF. Now let's do some factoring. When I factor it out of that first term, I'm left with a, and out of the second term, I'm left with three. All right, looking at number 10, what is my GCF between these three coefficients. The smallest number is 5. So I'm going to first look at that number and see if it goes into my other two numbers, and it does. So I'm going to factor out a 5. They also all have some y's, but the greatest amount I can factor out is just a 5y. Okay, so let's do some factoring. Let's look at our coefficients first. 10 divided by 5 is 2 y cubed divided by y is y squared. And let's go on to the second term. I'll get 8y and then minus 1. So this is something I see a lot. This right here, negative 5y divided by 5y. A lot of students will just like cancel them and they'll just write only these two terms. But just like I said earlier, I'm started out with three terms in my problem. I'm going to have three terms in my answer, okay? So negative 5y divided by 5y is actually negative 1. So we want to make sure you have three terms in your parentheses when you factor out a GCF. Let's go on to number 11. Number 11, I don't have any coefficients, so let's just look at the variables that they have in common. They both have some m's, and the greatest amount that I can factor out is just one m. When I factor out an m from each term, I'm left with mn minus 1. Okay, m divided by m is 1. Let's go on to number 12. 16 and 12, the greatest common factor between 16 and 12 is 4. So I'm going to factor out a 4, and this just gets a little longer, so I'm just going to do one big line. 4, the greatest amount of x's I can factor out is x squared. And the greatest amount of y's I can factor out is y cubed. So I have 4x squared, y cubed. When I divide that out of each 
term, I'm left with 4y and then plus 3. That's it. My x squareds cancel out, my y cubes cancel out because x squared divided by x squared is 1, y cubed divided by y cubed is 1, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So let's go on to number 13. The GCF, numerical GCF between these three numbers is going to be 9. And then looking at my variables, they need to be in common between all three terms. The only variable I have in common between all three terms is a. And the greatest amount I can factor out is just an a. So when I factor out a 9a, what am I left with? 5a minus b, don't forget that b, or 1b minus 1b, you can always do that, plus 10b squared. There you go. And number 14, this looks to be a little crazy, but let's just do our coefficients and then one variable at a time. When I do that, my numerical GCF is four. When I look at each variable at a time, the greatest amount of A's I can factor out is A squared. The greatest amount of B's is just B. The greatest amount of C's is C squared. So that's my GCF. When I factor that out of each term, each term, remember, and I'm going to have three terms in my parentheses, I'm left with a squared b to the 6 times c plus 4ab cubed c minus 2. 